Now, amidst the global impact on businesses resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, Access Bank has informed employees that it will be implementing a reduced pay structure affecting all employees, including its group managing director, Herbert Wigwe. The reduction is anticipated to significantly reduce the bank's operating expense as it navigates the uncertainties of the global pandemic. I think if there's one thing that has come out of this whole um, lockdown period and the fact that digital is the way forward is the fact that we do not need the same complements of staff to take us to where we're going. It's also shown that non-essential service, particularly from the outside staff, may not be at the levels that may be required during the future. So we probably don't need as many security men as required, even to the fact that we're not going to have um, all our branches open between now and December. We certainly don't need all the security men. We don't need all the tea girls. We don't need all the cleaners. We don't need all the tellers, et cetera, et cetera. So that number of staff, which represents 75% of our staff strength, I think is one that we need to basically speak with their employers with a view to getting them all right, to rationalize to the levels that we think will be necessary to basically sustain a mean but actually uh, 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 customer service oriented institution. So we are going to be looking at that. And as I speak to you today, um, there are several discussions that will go on with a view to making sure that we rationalize and bring those numbers to what are acceptable numbers for institution, given the days ahead that we see. The second has to do with our professional costs. Now, that is one that is very tricky. And it's tricky because I do understand and appreciate the fact that it's going to you know, bring its own pain to staff. We basically have to make the adjustments the same way you sounded uh, when we spoke 10 days ago with respect to basically cutting down costs. I will be the first to take the heat, and I'm going to take the largest pay cut, which will be as much as 40%. The rest shall have to cascade right through the institution. Everybody may have to make some adjustments of some sort. Let me quickly say that it's not the best of times. We understand the difficulty people are going through, but we also understand the higher calling of creating an institution that can continue to provide for us. And the fact that tomorrow, when things do improve, we shall revert to what is normal. And joining us live is Barista Femi Aborishade, who is a labor lawyer uh, via Skype. He will be with us. And also in studio is social, social commentator Anihuvi Ayeni. Good to have you again. Thank you. Very quickly, I'll begin with you. How do you respond when you saw that video? How did you react, rather? My reaction would be looking at it from the, from the aspect of human resources and administration. He has stated clearly what the reality is. Mm -hmm. There is a good to have. There's an anxiety. There is a joy in everyone's heart to be able to say that, okay, we'll go back to work and is everything, everything will go back to normal. But nothing is going back to normal. The whole world has been in lockdown now for the past, and Nigeria, specifically Lagos, has been on lockdown for the past six weeks. Uh, a number of events have been cancelled. Tens and hundreds of them have been cancelled all over the country. Now, what he's now saying, what he has said categorically, is that um, what you can look at from this is that certain activities that go on on a daily basis have necessitated the need for certain branches of Access Bank. They've necessitated the need to increase our staff in some areas of Access Bank. Now, some of those activities are no longer in existence, Amaka. Mm -hmm. Some of those activities have stopped. And so the income that is coming from those activities that will cushion the salary of the staff, that is what he's talking about. Those activities are no longer there. If those activities are not there, the branch does not need to be there. They will not need all the ad hoc staff that they have to, con to make sure that the bank is functioning. Mm -hmm. Rather they do this now than having to say, oh, people are working and they are not being paid salaries. I think he's just been very factual as to what is on ground and what is staring him in the face. Right. OK, let me go to you now, Mr. Bo uh, Barista Borishade. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Great. Thank now, you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, now, we hear of Access Bank cutting down staff. I'm sure you saw that video and openly declaring its intention to you know, do the same. Is there any legal protection afforded uh, the worker at this time you know, as a labor uh, lawyer? Can you give us insight on that? Well, uh, before I look at it from the legal point of view, let me also look at it as an industrial relations expert and a trade union and human rights activist. From that point of view, I would want to call on the trade unions, the central labor organizations, 
the union to which the workers in Asex Bank uh, belongs, for all of them to put pressure on government to ensure that legislations are passed to protect jobs and to protect salaries of workers during this difficult period. That is what has happened in several countries of the world. We have special funds are set aside specifically for paying workers during this difficult period. In Denmark, for example, 2.6 billion German krona, the Denmark Danish uh, uh, currency, was set aside for the payment of between 75 and 90 percent of salaries of workers in the private sector so that the employers would then pay the between 25 and 10 percent of wages of the workforce that ought to be done in this country because we are dealing with immediate existential issue well-being survivor of the people All that right. is the way to go all right, let's look and at... And I'm beginning from that point of view because under the law, there isn't much protection for the worker in the private sector. The employment relationship in the private sector is termed to be master-servant relationship. Under the master-servant relationship, the employers can terminate or determine the employment relationship at any time. Well, that brings me to my... If I may interject... Either, yes? If I may interject there, because it, what you just mentioned now leads me to my next question, which is about contracts. Uh, we believe that before yeah. anyone gets into any, some, any form of job employment, there must be some level of contract agreement. Now, are, are there contractual terms that apply to a suspension of contract not applicable under these kind of circumstances? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. And that, that was the issue I was going to address. Okay, go ahead, please. Under the customer relationship, the employer, either under pandemic situation or non-pandemic situation, can determine the contract of employment at any point in time. Mm -hmm. All that will be required is that the employer gives necessary contractual notice that was agreed between the parties. Therefore, the question would there, therefore be, did the, or does the employer give the necessary notice? Mm -hmm. If the employer does not give the necessary notice, then the, the worker will have an issue to contend with with the employer. Right. Alternatively, where the employer did not give the necessary notice, the employer will be required to pay uh, salaries in lieu of, of notice. notice. It may be one month, two months, depending on the contract. All right. However, it also depends on whether the employee concerned is a junior or manual worker. If you are a junior or manual worker, access bank, for example, may rely on section 17 of uh, 171A of the Labor Act. Section 17 of the Labor Act provides that the employer has a responsibility to provide work for the worker who presents himself or herself for work mm -hmm. and to pay the worker wages and salaries when such a worker presents himself or herself. However, under Section 171A, under emergency temporary situations, such as the pandemic situation of lockdown, the employer is allowed not, not to pay salaries for the period the worker does not present himself or herself for work. Mm -hmm. Under such a situation, for the very first one week, the worker will be entitled to only payment for the first day of that temporary period. If the period of emergency exceeds beyond one week, 
then the employer will require the authorization of a labor officer. Hmm. Therefore, the question therefore will be whether or not the employer, access back in this context, obtains the consent of a labor officer before determining uh, the employment contract. Hmm. But another, another clause that may be in the contract of employment is what we call first majority, first majority clause. First majority clause is a clause that provides that in, in, the, uh, in the occurrence of an event, an unforeseen event, beyond the control of, the, uh, uh, of any of the parties, mm -hmm. the parties are freed from the obligations under the contract. However, it is not usual, it is not common to have post majority clauses in regular employment contracts. It could exist in fixed contracts of employment, in uh, uh, contracts with expatriates, but under regular employment contracts, it is not usual to have post majority clauses. Barista, Another Barista, aspect. unfortunately, I have to let you go in the interest of time. We wish we had more time with you for all of this. Thank you so very much for sharing your thoughts there. Do stay safe, Barista. Uh -huh. Thanks very much for having me. All right, and then still in studio is Anihuvi. You, you can hear the barrister bringing different aspects to this. Let's talk yeah. about the human uh, face of this uh, situation. Uh, the people whose who's, uh, uh, jobs are on the line as it is, uh, with all of these things we are hearing, whether CBN has intervened or not, the truth is that post-COVID-19, uh, some people may have to lose their job. What should they be doing now in preparation for this uh, almost inevitable uh, thing that will happen. That is going to happen. You see, um, I'll look at it in this in these two ways. One of the ways that I'm going to look at it is the, is the structure of the Nigerian business environment. The Nigerian business environment is market driven and it is capital driven. It is not people driven. Right. If it is people driven, we will then be able to have jobs in Nigeria that, are, that have people in Nigeria that can take those jobs. If we had a lot of aggregate jobs in Nigeria now. We have hundreds and millions of Nigerians that we can put into jobs, but we don't have enough jobs on the aggregate value chain mm -hmm. that will employ those kind of people. Because of that, you have jobs in the labor market that doctors are working in banks. You have nurses that are working in banks. Because of that, and you see, you see all this, you see, you see these systems now going on, on and on and on, because people want a job. From what the barrister has been saying about the laws that need to come into place in Nigeria, for those type of laws to work very well in Nigeria, in all fairness, to those who are investing into these businesses, let us look at laws of, of business in Nigeria mm. that are more people driven than market and capital driven. When that happens, then you can get a balance. You can have jobs on the value chain of virtually every single area that creates jobs in Nigeria, in education, in healthcare, in agri. When you talk about the fact of the staff, I know, for example, uh, I know for a fact that some of these outsourced companies, especially the outsourced staff that have been taken out of their own organization, they do what is called the, the other side. Not just the other side, they, say, uh, they call it part B. What mm. is the other alternative? Right. What happens when you lose your job? Because these outsourcing contracts have, are, tightly, are tightly written. They have been written to say that at any time this job might go. Because mm. of that, they have started preparing their staff. What I would tell the staff is this. If they're not saying that they're going to fire you and there is no money tomorrow, right. some of them may get fired and be given the money. Whatever money they are given, they should invest it in a business that is of benefit to them. And also the 25% they can take from their pension, which they have been given into, they can use that to start something rather than just spending it on frivolities. I want to say thank you so very much, Annie Hilvey, for your interventions thank there. You.